All right, all praise to the Most High God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for allowing us to come together yet again for the Shabbat day, giving him all praise, glory, and honor, thanking him for all things, all blessings, little or small, great, all, everything, we just owe it all to the Father. Can't I can't express it enough. Uh, for opening our eyes so that we can see the truth and, and uh, basically what it takes to please God, because that's the reason that we're here. To please God and do his will, not our own will. So we're gonna mm -hmm. start off and uh the type. Go ahead up. No, no, yeah, yeah, I can say just uh, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. I'm kind. So the title of today's lesson is sleep paralysis or demon possession. And in these times, like uh like I always like to say, the devil is cranking up his activity. So we have to crank up our activity as well, you know what I'm saying, to match that. Or, or exceed that. And we do that with prayer and fasting. And we do that also with being staying righteous, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments to prevent us from falling to the evil one. Because like the scripture says, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but the enemy is like, a he's always on the prowl. Even in your sleep, when you let your God down, he's always right. on the prowl trying to take souls, take spirits. And uh, control. To gain control. Mm -hmm. So we got to be aware of that. Um, in this walk, I know we stay serious a lot. I know sometimes we like to let our, like, let our, our guards, not guards down, but like kind of relax. But in the time that, even in the times that, uh, time that, 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 kind of, even in the times that we are relaxed, we always got to stay on our P's and Q's like that, uh, like in Gideon, the story of Gideon, when, um, uh, they, they even when they were drinking water, they always, when we would, they were drinking water, they was always scanning the horizon to see when danger was approaching. So we always need to be on the lookout when danger approaches. Because a lot of times the enemy is not going to come when you're prepared. The enemy is going to come at a weak moment, like the example when Christ fasted for 40 days in the wilderness. And after that, he was a little weak. And that's when the temple came. That's when the enemy came. So the enemy's not going to come when you're building up. The enemy's not going to try to come in the way that you have fortified. The enemy's going to try to come in the way that you, in some kind of way that you're lacking, in your spirit or in your walk. That's the point that he's going to attack your most vulnerable part. So we always got to make sure that we have no chinks in our arms and always be willing to correct one another, right? If I see something in you, like, for instance, if I got a bug in my nose, I can't see it. But my brother, my sister can say, hey, you got something in your nose, get it. Same way when we see our brothers and sisters in sin, because they can't see it. A lot of times they don't know that they're doing something in sin. So we got to correct one another. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. So, brothers, uh, brother Ben, grab the book of Romans, chapter 15 and verse 4. Brother Zay, grab Sarah, chapter 19 and verse 19. All praises to the most high God. Book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us. Oh, and then excuse me, Ben, Ben, KJV. KJV. <laughs> um. But whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. Con, con. So everything that was written in this book was written for our comfort and patience so that we can have hope. So we can look back at the things that our foreparents did, the good things, and also the mistakes that they made so that, so that we won't make those same mistakes. And the good things they did so that when they got blessed, so that we do those things. So everything that was written for a reason. This is not a religious book. It's our history book. You learn from your history so you won't repeat those things that are not pleasing to the most high God. All right, Brother Zaid, you got that? Uh, what was it again? Sirach. I mean, yeah, Sirach 1919. You got Sirach 19, 19. All right, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 19, starting at verse 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. 
So that's just what I was just talking about. Everything in this life that we do is to please the Most High God. Ooh, thank you. To the Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter twelve and first. Verse 13, the whole duty of man is to what? Do God's Dude, will. That's the real. only reason we was put here, not to do my will, not to be, yeah. uh, be a successful businessman. Those Thank things you. come by doing his will, right? There's nothing wrong with being successful, but in order to be successful in God's eyes, we have to do his will, and he will give you all those things, all the desires of your heart, as long as it lined up with his plan for you. Certain things that we that we want to do or want to be, it's not in the plans for us. So that's why those certain things don't happen. And when people pray for those things, they don't come to fruition. They think that, oh, there's no God or God don't hear me. No, God has different plans for you. Everybody has a plan that God guides our steps. So we got to find out what is what is God's mission or God's plan for us individually. Everybody has a mission. Everybody has a walk, but we just got to find it. And we find that out by coming closer to God, by praying and fasting and doing his will and keeping his laws and statutes and commandments. Right? I wanted to be a basketball player, but guess what? It ain't work out that way. That wasn't God's plan for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I tried to run track. I was a good athlete. I tried to run track, but that was not in the cars for me. I was a good football player. So it, that's it, just an example. Go ahead, out. And, and I, I want to just, uh, we just, uh, what we're doing right now is letting the Holy Spirit lead us, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm led by the Spirit to tell him too, because I want to be a basketball player, mm -hmm. athletic. I wanted to do, I wanted to live my life. And I had the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. But when God has called you to different plans, he wanted me to be a preacher. Mm -hmm. and my dad was a preacher and I didn't want it. Mm -hmm. I did not want that. And I grappled with that for so long because it was what I wanted. And I had idols. I idolized Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. He was a celebrity to me. And the Lord came to me a couple of days ago and said, give away your idols. So it's not my way. It is his way that we have to be aware. Who mm -hmm. are we serving? What path are we going down? Am I doing, am I acting as I want to act or according to how God wants a woman to act? God wants a man to act. God wants the children of Yahweh to act. So I, I just resonate with that so much, you know? And so I just want to say that because that just, it just stood out to me. It's his way. It's, it's his, his way. way or the highway. Mm -hmm. Come. That's right. Grease up. Grease up. Go ahead, I'll bring it up. Proverbs 16 and 9. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Con, con. And, and, and I'm gonna give the I'm gonna give the other corner, the other side of that. The, the example I used earlier about Christ in the wilderness. Now, at the end of that, uh the enemy said that I will give you all of these things, but you have to do what? Bow down and worship me. Right. So mm -hmm. you can have those things. Right. But are you willing to pay that price for your soul? Are you willing to do that? Because the enemy going to give you exactly what you want. The most high God is like a good parent. Right. For instance, a child wants to eat candy all day. But the parent know that if I let this child eat candy for breakfast, candy for lunch, the damn teeth going to run out. Right. The enemy don't care. Mm -hmm. About the end, he he because he know he has you in the end, so he's gonna let you do whatever you want, do as I will, right? But at the end of the day, is that worth it? Is the pleasure of this world, the pleasure of the flesh, worth what the, the the soul is gonna have to pay for in the end? So God is the good parent. A lot of things that we want, He don't let us, let us have because we're not ready for the certain things. A lot of money, a lot people get a lot of money who don't know how to deal with money. Mm -hmm. They don't lose. I, I watch these stories about people that hit the lottery and they broke five years later because they never handled good money. They was never taught how to manage money. And yeah, when they got that large amount of money. They was on drugs and all types of things happened to them because it wasn't for them. Go ahead, up. No, no. I was just saying. I think that's a great segue into the title for our lesson, which wow. is. Well. Uh, demonic possession, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing when you're being possessed because some evil spirits, some unclean spirits can dwell in you like a dormant disease, huh. right? And they just sit there and they don't act unless they're triggered, right? Huh. And then they come, they come out, they do their damage and they go back in and go dormant. You won't mm -hmm. even know who's hitting you, mm -hmm. who's destroying your life, who, who, you know what I'm saying, who's bringing you down uh, uh, 
And so yeah, man. Like I said, all praise to the Most High. And, and I'm gonna say this. Uh, I'm gonna speak for myself because that has happened to me. Like when you get into a situation and something triggers you, and you feel like this angry, this anger spirit come over you, and you react. But then once you get that out, it's like, damn, what was that? Like it's like something like took over you for a second. And we see that a lot when like people lose their cool and go shoot up the school or get into incidents. Then after, after like when they ask neighbors or people to know them, like, damn, that's not him. That's not in his uh, character. I yep, that. yep. Tom did that. I would. How did Tom? He even, would never. Even yourself. Like, damn, you certain things, the certain way that we yep. write the certain situation. Like, damn, did I do that? Damn, you, you, you can feel it. It wasn't you at that moment, but you gave leeway. You opened up doors to, to uh, spirits to enter into you to use you for that split second. And when you let an enemy use you for a split second, that can cause your life. That can cause your lifetime. When people pull the trigger over, over uh, emotions, a heated argument, they pull the trigger, then they have instant regret because you allowed yourself to be used for that one moment. So the devil then had you kill somebody and now you're going to be gone to prison for however long you're going to be gone. That's two birds with one stone. So we always got to be able to stay on guard with our spirits. Check our, our uh, we got to check our feelings and emotions, right? Because it takes a split second for you to do something that you're going to regret for the rest of your life. Even in the words that we speak, we got, because once you say something, you can't take it back. And uh, words, it, you, yeah, exactly. So grab the book of uh, Sirach, chapter 21, one through two. And Brother Ben, grab uh, Isaiah one through two. So, all right, this is the book of Sirach, also known as the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, starting at verse two. No, start at verse one through two. One through two. Mm -hmm. My son, have you have hast thou sinned? Do so no more, mm -hmm. but ask pardon for thy former sins. Verse two, flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. Mm -hmm. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion slaying the souls of men. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, as a matter of fact, grab uh, 1 Peter 5 and 8 real quick before, before Ben read. 1 Peter 5 and 8. Con, this is the book of 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Hmm. So, again, when we put our guards down, the enemy is always there. The prince of the power of the air waiting for an opportunity to use you. Right. For his will. The Holy Spirit. Hmm. Is the spirit, the Holy Spirit is looking for an opportunity for us to use, I mean, to use us for God's will. Will. In this walk, you're either going to be serving the Most High God or you're going to be serving the enemy. It's just that simple. There's no between because Revelations, what, 315 says, if you look warm, God going to spit you out. So hey, we hey, gotta hey. Be hot. So we either got to be hot in this walk or cold. And if you're cold, I mean, you don't have the Holy Spirit, which you got an unclean demonic un un possession. Yeah, kind, kind. So yeah, so we always got to be on the lookout. Why don't be so easily triggered? Know the the uh, symptoms of possession, right? Mm. And I'm gonna go into that. I got this article about symptoms of being possessed, being being very agitated. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, Want to be a loner, right? All praises, all praises. I was just talking about you this morning. I was just talking about you this morning. I see that's how the most I got work. Hey, everybody, that's brother Matthew. Uh, brother, brother Matthew. Con. Oh, I just, that's crazy. I just sat on the link. Yeah. Okay, well that's crazy. I was just talking about the brother this morning. I was like, hey, I wonder what park at. Oh, <laughs> praises. That's the most I got work. Oh man, hey brother, the, the title of today's lesson is sleep, per, uh, sleep paralysis or demon possession. 
these things are true. These things are written in the book. So we got to be able to recognize when we have one or when one of our loved ones or, or we're dealing with people who have those spirits attached to them. All right. All right. So, uh, Brother Ben, where you was at? Isaiah. Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. I thought you said Isaiah 1. No, Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2. Hey, uh, uh, you got that? Uh, um, I wanted to make a quick comment, too, as Go well. Um, on the last thing you said, like you said, we we have to be aware, uh, conscious, right? Um, paying attention to, um, our, you know, what's going on, our character, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what we're saying, uh, the things coming out of our mouth, everything, the images in our head, the uh, the videos, the, the audio, what we watch, what we look at. All of these things we take in on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're around wicked people, you're taking in wicked things. You're perverting your eyes. If you're around uh, those who are the multitude who do sin, right? You mm -hmm. you are a part of that. So what the Most High God is saying, like you said, you got to pay attention to the symptoms of someone who's demonically possessed. Because you have to self-diagnose. Mm. Self-diagnose. Or if you're not self-diagnosing, you need to be closer to enough to your brother or your sister who knows the word of God and could be able to point out, hey, uh, something on scene, right? Your, your temperature off. Mm -hmm. You need to be checked. Right. Fine. So like you said, the word uh, I want to bring out this real quick, that we're agitated. Like you said, if feeling or appearing troubled or nervous. Right. Anxiety. Mm -hmm. Right. So you were saying that, you know, you have to learn the symptoms and being agitated. Right. Is one of those amongst others. Mm -hmm. So. all folks. And then also the word vigilant. Right. The the, the meaning uh, the word vigilant is being alertful, watchful, especially to avoid danger. So we have to be vigilant in this walk. You can't be out here like lots lots of days ago. You know what I'm saying? Being just on on cruise control or autopilot. That's when the enemy has his most opportune time to take you down when you're not being watchful of what's going around you or who you're allowing in your circle or who you like. They call that spirit transferring, like like shaking people's hands and embracing people. No, I don't I don't do that. Mm. That's to the strangers. That's called, you know, what I'm saying? Mm. transferring spirits. You don't mm -hmm. know what type of spirit that is that person has. So no, we don't do that. I'm not going to be rude or anything. But I'm not shaking everybody's hand because a handshake means that we are in agreement. Agreement. The handshake. Oh. And I don't know what you're gonna say. I don't know what you're about. So I'm not gonna say that I'm in agreement with anything that you, especially a, uh, uh, especially a uh, what you call it, especially a oh. uh, uh, a stranger. People just want to come up and shake your hand. You're not transferring those spirits. I don't know what spirits you're dealing with. We got a lot of demonic forces out here. We got a lot of witches. And warlocks out here, people don't know how serious this is. That's why everything is written in this Bible for our admonishing, for our learning. Be circumspect, be vigilant, be watchful, guard your soul, because that's what the devil wants. He wants your soul. All right, so our brother Ben, read what you got. Book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 61. one. 61. In the year that King... Isaiah. Hey, died. Brother Ben. Brother Ben. Uh, Isaiah yeah. chapter 61, verse oh, 1. 61. My bad. Yeah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 61 and 1. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So the part, the part, hold on uh, real quick, the part, when, when you are dealing with unclean spirits and when you're dealing with sin, and I'm going to get into that in a second here. The scripture says, whoever you worship, that's who you that's who you serve, right? So our people that are in sin, they are bound. Their spirits are bound. So that's what we came to do. Free the captives that are bound, bound by Satan, bound by wickedness, bound by this, the, the world of darkness. 
these this this uh scripture, these, these laws, statutes, commandments, and the love of God has come to free us from that. All of us on here, we've been free from sins, the world of darkness, walking in dark. We can see now, we can see the obstacles. Now, the, ob the obstacles are still there. The only difference uh -huh. now is that we have that light so that we can see it. We're not stumbling around. You got something up? Uh, yeah, I wanted to just take that a little bit further. We have that light. We have that awareness. We have that consciousness. We have that that uh, uh, attention to detail to know something is off. Uh -huh. Something is not right with me or with my spouse or mm -hmm. with my child, mm -hmm. right? So you have to be aware. You got to know word, God, a word of God first. You have to have knowledge of that. And then you have to be aware of his word when you're going through your trial, when you're going through your tribulation, when you're being tempted, right? Mm -hmm. Because out of sight, out of mind, if you're not thinking about the most high God, you vulnerable for attack. Exactly. That's why this word we are to meditate on it day and night. It got to be on your mind every second. Your husband, your wife, you got to be feeding off each other's godly energy. Exactly. And so that's the state where we want to be, and we don't want to be in a position of being demonically possessed. And so look at your works. Look at how you're spending your time every day. Who you're talking about? Is it is it the Lord? Is his goodness, is his grace, is it, you know, all of these things. And so we pay attention to those things and you'll see the symptoms start to pop up. You know, the mm -hmm. demonic symptoms. So all praise to the most high. Time. Time. Yeah, like you say, you're going to examine your fruit. What fruit you bearing? Escalations 522. Examine get your that. fruit. You know what I'm saying? Grab that. Matter of fact, start at the bad fruit. I think that's Galatians 5 Ooh. and 11 or 12. We're going to start with the bad, then with the good, and then uh, e e examine yourself. See which fruit you are bearing. Galatians what? 5 and? Five, start at, I think it's 5 and 11. 5 and 11. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, no, why do I? 12. 12. 12? Yeah. Um, I would, this is the book of Galatians chapter five, starting at verse 12. I would that I would, they were even cut off, which trouble you for brethren. Ye have been called unto Liberty. Let me read that again. Galatians five and 13 for brethren. You have been called unto Liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, mm. but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. All right, jump to 16. Verse 16, this I say then, Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of your flesh. Mm -hmm. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that you would. All right, jump to 19. 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. What? Witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Hatred. Variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, errors, drunkenness, revelings, and such alike, of which I tell you before. As I have told in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now we do know that sin is different. Sins are different demonics, different uh, demons, different spirits. 
you have a lust sin, you have a, a covetousness sin, you have all these different sins. They're different demonic spirits that we've allowed to be attached to us. So we got to examine ourselves. And these were a couple of sins that were just, that was a bad fruit. So if you're exhibiting any of these bad fruits, it's time to check yourself, right? Now, jump to verse 22. Now, these are the good fruit. Come, this is verse, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit. Hey, uh, hey, uh, you're breaking up. Hey, uh, you're breaking up. I'm, so I'm going to read it real quick. It says, but the fruit of the spirit uh -huh. is love, joy, peace, long suffering. I want to pause on that long suffering because a lot of times people think when you're going through something, you must have did something bad. No, that's God trying you. That's God te test your resolve. God said long suffering. Things are not going to happen at the snap of a dime, at the snap of a finger. So we have to be able to go through long suffering. That teaches us in your, in your patience, possess you, your soul. So we got to be able to go through things for a long period of time. God is not on the time clock. Well, he, well, God, I had enough. No, we got to go through long suffering. We got to prove to him that we built for this life. When we first come into the truth and find out who we are as a people, man, it's a glorious thing. Until, man, I got to keep all them laws. Until you start, family members start thinking you crazy and excommunicating you. Friends start cutting you loose. And now you're just over here in this small circle. Can you? Are you still going to stand with the most high God? It's long suffering. You're going to your family members going to think you're crazy. You're not going to be invited to like Christmas. I don't go to those things anyway, but any family functions because they know when I come, I'm bringing a Bible with me and they don't want to hear yep. that. They don't want to hear that. They want to be, they want to be comfortable in their sins. So you're not going to be invited to those things. If you stand on this word, if you bold for this word, if you see sin, you call it out. A lot of times people in the truth, they'll see sin and won't say nothing because they're trimming their ways seeking love. We ain't doing that. Mm. We ain't trimming our ways seeking no love. If that makes you feel uncomfortable, that means uh, you got something that you need to work on. It's not my problem. Yep. I'm doing my job. It's called the correction. All right. Uh, so I'm getting off course here a little bit. Uh, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So when we are show forth showcasing those attributes. Those fruits, that mean we walk in the right spirit. I mean, we got the Holy Spirit on us. There's nothing wrong with being mad. There's nothing wrong with being angry. It's how you handle the anger. It's if you can control your anger. The Bible says be angry, but sin not. When you allow your anger or that emotion to take over, that's when the that enemy can slip right in. and, and cause Anger or irritation. Exactly. Yeah. And call you to do something that you're going to regret. Go ahead up. I'll just, I'll just add, like you said, anger, but uh, a lot of times uh, uh, that may not be the the, the top uh, demonic entity running at that might at that point. You just might be an irritated individual. That everything that person does, or uh, 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 they don't see it my way, or so forth and so on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it can irritate you, it can vex your spirit, right? It can and pull you into a, a place where uh, you're disobedient to your husband. It can pull you to a place where you talk back to your parents, right? Mm -hmm. When the parent gives order, if y'all remember as a kid, you talk back, you said no. Right? That's one of the kids' favorite to, uh, 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 words that the, as a kid is no. Mm -hmm. Right? I do it my way. Mm -hmm. And so we have to understand that demonic possession is real and sleep paralysis is, is, is that point where you can feel the presence of that demonic entity on the flesh. It's like he's holding you down. Mm -hmm. I've had it happen to me several times. God. When I look back over it, I knew I was in sin. <laughs> I knew I was in sin, mm -hmm. and that gave him access to to come in to my body, my flesh, and to have dominion and and attract all these ungodly situations, circumstances that you got to go through. Right? Yeah. It, it's like my life was getting harder. And like, yeah. Go ahead, uh, Salak, you. No, you good. You good. So I want to read this article real quick. It's called Sleep Demon, right? It goes into sleep paralysis, paral uh, sleep paralyzing. And uh, it's by Kara uh, Bagat. She's a black woman. You know what I'm saying? So I want to read this. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but um, it just gives us some tips. It says, sleep demons are a frightening phenomenon that are all too real for people who experience sleep paralysis. 
Roughly 20% of the people have an episode of sleep paralysis, at least occasionally, in as many as 75% of these episodes, the sleeper has a hallucination in which they hear, see, feel, or sense something in their bedroom that is not actually there. Sleep-related hallucinations have been described throughout recorded history. We explore the fascinating topic of sleep demons, including various cultures, depictions of these intruders, modern scientific explanations, and ways to reduce the risk of sleep paralysis. So when we talk about uh, sleep paralysis, a lot of people don't like to talk about it, but like 20% of the people say that they've experienced these things. Me, myself, I've experienced them before. I've experienced them when I was young. And uh, like, like I just said, I look back at the time when I was going through those things, I was in sin. I allowed demonic spirits to enter, right? Because now we, we, we got to understand that when we're in sin, we're making a contract with the devil. Mm. And when we are mm. in sin, you're making a contract or a covenant with the, with the enemy. So you're giving him range to come in. Just like when we when we in righteousness, we in contract with God, the Holy Spirit is, is within us. So the Holy Spirit is coming in. But once you sin, the Holy Spirit leaves. And that demonic spirit come in. And it has its way with you. A lot of times you won't even know it's there until you start exhibiting those. Uh, I ain't go all the way down deep into the article. But it, one of the things was a person that's being very manifesting. Irritable. It started manifesting. Itself. Yep. A person is being very irritable, uh, short tempered, uh, want to be alone all the time, want to be alone. That's why uh, a hey brother, uh, brother be ben, bothered. a hey brother Ben, grab Luke 22, 31 through 32. So we see these things happen to us. We got to we got to examine ourselves. We got to fast. We got to pray. We have to get that spirit up off of us, right? And we're dealing with a brother. I'm not going to say no names right mm. now. We're dealing with a brother that's going through these things right now. And he opened himself up to porno, pornograph. You know what I'm saying? Watching porno. And these things are happening to him. He's mm. right because he opened himself up to demonic forces. Go ahead, Doc. All right, so Luke 22 and 20, 31. Yeah, Luke 22, 31 and 32. Luke 22, 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan <laughs> has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, mm. that thy faith fail not. And mm. when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So boom. And that's what we are uh, going over with the young man. We building him up so when he go through what he go through, strengthen your brothers. Like let whatever you went through be a testimony. But the the key word, the key part of that I want to stress was Satan desires to sift you. Satan wants you to be alone because when you in your own head or when he just talking to you, everything that you're doing is right. No matter how off it is in your own mind, you're gonna think you're right. You don't have nobody there to correct you, you don't have nobody there to check you. That's why the Bible says, be in the presence of godly men continually. If you're around wicked people, they're going to tell you whatever you're doing is right. Mm. They don't know truth. They don't know how you're going to go get uh, good advice from ungodly people. That don't make no sense. What they say it may sound good, but if it's not grounded in the spirits, we know it's not coming. Mm. From, if it's not grounded in his word. It's not coming from God. It's coming from the world. And we do it's know what God said that uh. this world is foolish. Go ahead, up. No, I would, I would just uh, just just uh, piggybacking on what you're saying. Like you said, uh, anything in this world, you know, what I'm saying anybody who is a friend with this world uh, in agreement with this world is at enmity with God, because this is man's world. This is uh, Satan's world. Right. Mm -hmm. The prince, the power, of the air, the scripture says. And so he controls everything. The media. When you walk outside your door, even now, the enemy is in your household. Mm -hmm. Right. We bought things into our household uh, that have put us in agreement with the enemy. Uh, and a lot of people don't think about it on that level, but it's that deep. It's that deep. 
So, uh, uh, and like I said, that might be a discussion for another topic because mm -hmm. that spiritually goes down the rabbit hole a lot more deeper because it plays into how we live our lives, the homes, the mortgages that you live in, right? You, as soon as you walk out your door, you got all type of media and people wanting to sell you things and so forth and so on. And so the very nature of the society that we live in is pollution to us. It's poison to the Israelite. Mm. It's poison. And, and like I was saying, I watched this video. The guy was, uh, he said uh, the angel came and got him because he's been music. He said the angel pulled him to the back of the club and he can see this rapper on stage rapping and he can see the spirits coming out of the, uh, out of the, uh, yeah. exactly, the accursed thing. That's why, it's, exactly, get rid of the, get rid of the accursed thing. That's something that is, uh, something that's, uh, material. It's a curse though. That's why God said, get rid of it. When we went to kill, when Saul went in to kill all those people, God said, kill the, the, the animals, everything, kill them. And if you take anything that they were worshiping their God with, that thing is polluted. And let me, right? let me, uh, and, and, and let me you piggyback off that. You said it's, it's polluted. So like you said, the word, there are certain words that a people, a person could say that, mm -hmm automatically you have a negative connotation of the, it's a derogatory term, mm -hmm. right? So I was talking to one of the brothers and I said, man, I'm going to give a quickie message. What do people think when I say a quickie? They think of something derogatory, someone who's been into pornography or something like that. Think of, right, getting one off real quick, mm -hmm. right? So it perverts the mind. It's, the word is associated with that. Mm -hmm. So that spirit, that demonic spirit is associated even with that word, what we use, what we talk. And how we speak. So we can't even speak, right? We have to watch what we say is that deep. And so, you know, I just want to mention that because we want to give practical examples as well that people can be like, yeah, so I know I started to notice this in my life based off how I was speaking. It's like I was gravitating towards that, right? If I'm speaking negative, if I'm, if I'm always down, I'm always depressed and so forth and so on, I attract and draw those things to manifest mm -hmm. in my life. Because yeah. you don't know how to speak about yourself. You don't know how to speak about your family. You don't know how to. It, it, they used to say growing up, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say, don't say it at all. Mm -hmm. It could go around and bounce in your head all day and all night. Mm -hmm. But don't speak on that. Keep it inside. Yeah. Because even if you don't know and you're unsure, you do not want to offend your brother, your sister, your mother, your husband. Right. Mm -hmm. Take it to God in prayer and let him begin to change you from the inside out. Come. Come. All right. Uh, grab the, the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 11. Ephesians 6 and 11? Yeah, all the way to 19. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, starting at verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So what is, hold on, what is the armor of God? A lot of people read that, but they have no understanding what they read. The armor of God What's, these laws, statutes, commandments, right? Mm, Go ahead up. Con, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, Stand thereof, having your loins girt with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Uh, mm. So again, this is this spiritual warfare is real out here. Sometimes people don't even know that they're being attacked. Sometimes people don't even know that they're being possessed. Sometimes we don't even know when we're dealing with somebody that's possessed. So God gives us a checklist. 
to be able to, if you got that spiritual discernment, you know when somebody is not right. And, mm. and, and I was going to say it's through no fault of their own, but it is their fault. Because Bob, the scripture tells us how to prevent these things. If we walk in righteously, if we're walking in the spirit, that don't mean bad things are not going to happen to you, but you'll be able to, to be able to battle those things when they come along righteously. We can't fight fire with fire. I can't be, I can't get rid of a devil by being a devil, right? Mm. The only way I can get rid of a devil is by being righteous. You know what I'm saying? Because the enemy trembles at the, at the presence of God. And I'm, I'm going to give an example. When I was eight years old, nine years old, and the first time one of these things happened to me in my sleep, I used to go to church, but I would, I, I would you know how you is when you're young going to church, we uh, uh sleeping Sleep. basically. But I, but I had, but I had, I had a spirit in me, right? I don't need to go to church to know I got a spirit of God in me. So when this thing happened to me in my sleep, I tried to fight it at first, but it was too powerful. It was holding me down. And I can remember in my mind, I said, please, God, help me. And as soon as that came out of my mouth, the thing disappeared, right? Because a lot of times in this world, in this life, we don't know the power that we have in us. We don't know who we have fighting for us. But we have to open our mouth and acknowledge him in all things, right? I couldn't fight it myself. I could not fight it off myself. I had to call on the Most High God, our power to fight that thing off. And then as you get older, you know how to fight it off, but you still, we still have God fighting for us as long as we are righteous, as long as we walk in it, especially when we know better, especially when we know this truth, especially when we know we are, we know what God expects of us because when we're ignorant, it says God wink at our time of ignorance. The Holy Spirit walked with us in our cricket paths because we was ignorant. But once we know it is more, it is more serious, more detriment that we that we stay on the right path because in the end, our end will be worse than those who had never known. Our end mm. will be worse than it was at the beginning if we walk away from this truth or we go back into wickedness and evilness. So we can't uh we can't sub succumb to uh evil spirits. All right. So uh that's where the book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter one, three through five. One, three through five. Yeah, one, three through five. Um, the book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter one, starting at verse three through five. Mm -hmm. For froward thoughts separate from God mm -hmm. and his power, when it is tried, reproveth the unwise. For into a malicious soul, Wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. Mm. Verse 5, for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. So and will were, not abide. I'm sorry, blocking, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, and, and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in so right there is telling you that when we are in sin the holy spirit will flee right because what it takes to keep the holy spirit it takes discipline my son if you come to serve the lord prepare thy soul for temptation the enemy is going to tempt you the enemy tempted christ on that mountain if you bow down and worship me i'll give you all this you, we have to be this, but I don't care if I'm dead broke. Yeah, I don't care whatever state of mind we're in, whatever we're going through. We have to be disciplined, not mm. to fall for the snares, not to fall for the wiles of the devil. Uh, Proverbs right. 25 and 28 says, he that have no rule over his own spirit and no discipline over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. So we have no protection anything can enter into you. Fine, fine. You have no protection. Anything can come right up into you like you got a, a door wide open and all these unclean, because the Holy Spirit is no longer there. So if the Holy Spirit is not there, that means the unclean spirit is going to come in. Oh. So he that has no discipline is as a town without walls, no protection. Your God ain't there to protect you. John 9, 31. I, John 9, 31. 
It says the book of John, chapter nine, starting at verse 31 says. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So when we're going through certain situations, we praying and nothing is changing them because we in the midst of sin. God ain't oh. hearing your prayers. We are in the midst of sin. The enemy has taken over. You have let that enemy take control of your body, of your spirit. Oh. You're always irritable. You're always, but why? Why you always mm. why you always irritable? The Bible says yeah. this walk, this is a walk of peace. God's a God of peace. Why are you always angry? That's a telltale sign. You got something unclean in you. Mm. When people are angry for no reason, when people are irritable for no reason, that's a that that's a symptom. Everything, every any, problem, any uncleanness, mm. any sickness has symptoms. But we have to be able to uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for to to diagnose diagnose those symptoms. Damn, hold on, something ain't right with me. Why I'm always mad? Why I'm always irritable? Why I want to be alone all the time? Why? Why I can't take correction? Mm. You know they're showing it to me out this book. Oh. <laughs> That's a symptom. Something ain't right with your spirit. Something that's inhabiting your body, you don't even know it. And and it, and if we let it dwell too long in us, it grows roots, and it's just normal now. It's normal behavior. And now it's harder to root out, right? They say you yep. can't. That, old, they, you can't teach an old dog new. That they 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 um, it's harder to root out. It's harder to get out. That's why we got to nip these things in the bud. Before they get huh. entrenched in us. That's why we need righteous people around us to check us. It might hurt. Huh. It might hurt. Sometimes it do hurt your feelings. Damn, you don't look at yourself in that light. That's me. I ain't talking about me. Yeah, we're talking about you. And this is not to hurt you. This is not to hurt your feelings. This is love. So be able to accept and, and take that corrective criticism. All right, you got something up? Con, no, I just was saying, uh, just and most people, um, how they would say, well, that's that's how I've been, or I've always been like this, mm -hmm. right? And so you never question yourself, um, you know, in terms of why am I acting like this, as you mentioned. And so a lot of these things manifest. The Most High says in the scriptures, as we just bought out, that eventually it's going to come uh, to uh, pass. You're going to start behaving in this way. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, one thing that the Most High showed me was uh, we talked about a while ago. Uh, I think I did a, a lesson called I'm infected with sin, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it manifested in the man and uh, what was his name? Uh, the one in the caves, right? Oh, yeah. uh, right. So mm -hmm. I'll pray. So I want to get ahead of y'all. But yeah, so like I said, we just have to be aware of that. Kind, kind. And um, yeah, we have to be aware of it. Be, be able to change, be able to self-diagnose, examine. The Bible says examine yourself. Examine yourself. You know when you ain't right. Nobody knows you because we can put on the front in front of everybody. But deep down inside, you know who you really are. God knows who you really are. The enemy knows who you really are. He knows what your weakness is. He's banking on you not listening. He's banking on you not changing. Because at the end, you're gonna be he he the only way he's gonna leave you alone once he gets his calls on you is when you are ruined. Mm. And he has no more use for you. And then he cash you away like a two dollar, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a two dollar, cause that's what he do. Use you and abuse you. Then Harley. We, he, he, he done with you. We don't $2 want to Harley. get to that point. We don't want to get to that point. All right, so um, let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter fifty nine, one through three. Brother Ben, Isaiah. grab uh, brother Ben, grab Colossians chapter three, five through ten. Brother Matt, you want to read? God, I'm a lot. All right, kind. All right, you grab Ephesians 4 27 through 30. Kind. All right, go to my Shalom, family. Shalom, Shalom. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. Yeah, 27 through 30. 
John. It says, neither give place to the devil. Mm. 28. Neither give place to the devil. 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Mm. Verse 30. Mm -hmm. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Boom. So that part, grieve not the Holy Spirit. When that when when we grieve the Holy Spirit, I mean we're we're insane. And like we read in Wisdom of Solomon, the Holy Spirit will flee the sea. Right? Give no place to the enemy. How you give place to the enemy? Anger, mm. uh, irritability, irritability, Agitation. adultery, all these sins. That's giving place to the enemy. We don't need to give place to the enemy because when we when say give no place to the enemy, give not your body to the enemy. Let him not let him not be in dominion over you. It's just that mm -hmm. simple. People make this ball complicated, but it's not complicated at all. Only thing we got to do is do as we're told. You know what I'm saying? And love one another. Love the most high God with all our mind, body, and soul, and love our brothers as ourselves. Correct each other. Because I want I want the same thing for all my brothers that I want for me. Even if we do fall out, guess what? It, it, it's like it's like we we can learn from children. Because I remember when I was a kid, me and my home was fault. The next that same afternoon, we bike friends again. I mean, we can mm -hmm. be fist of cups, bloody lips, swole up eye, but we cool that afternoon. The enemy wants you to stay at each other's throats. The enemy wants us in our society to stay fighting amongst each other. But a strong, a, a, a weak nation is those that are the body. Now, I know that we're not going to get along with everybody, especially two thirds that just don't get this book. But for us, it is true. There should be no schisms, right? Mm. We all know who, what God we serve in. You might call him a Haya, Yahweh, Yahweh. We all know that we serve in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Isaac and Jacob. So we shouldn't let those things separate us from, you know what I'm saying, from being brothers and, and loving on one another. But that's what the enemy wants. We see it in the world how the enemy divides us. West Coast okay. against East Coast. That's the enemy. That's demonic. Light skin mm. against dark skin. Good hair, bad hair. That's that's Willie Lynch. Those mm. are demonic forces that, that, that were created to divide us as a people. Man, we stronger together. We got to be able to recognize these things, these pitfalls that they try to pit us against one another, right? We don't want to oh. be, we don't want to be demon possessed. Oh, you stepped in my shoe and I got to kill you. What? What sense that make? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and if you are the one to step on somebody's shoe or offend somebody, say, excuse me. But we, yep. as the ones that get in our shoes stepped on or being offended, we cannot be easily offended. How are you so easily offended? That's um, another that's another telltale sign. Something ain't right. Little things shouldn't offend us to the to the to the point where we ready to fight. We ready to cut them off for life over little things. What happened to the art of communication? The art of communication. That's a that's a that's a, a skill that a lot of us lack. And you heard me say us. A lot of us lack the skills effective communication. I'm not just saying talking to just talk, but effective communication. And you got to have effective listening skills, right? But the devil don't mm -hmm. want us to communicate. The devil wants us to be at each other. That means we are possessed. We don't have the Holy Spirit in us if we don't, if we can't work things out as brothers and sisters, right? So uh, grab what you got, Brother Dave. Uh, Isaiah 59, uh, 59 one three. Isaiah 59, 1 through 3. And it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. 
but your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you mm -hmm. that so, he will not hear. Mm -hmm. Verse three, for your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perverseness. Mm. Now, it says your, your tongue, is, your, God has separated from you. Now your tongue has, has lies and all that. We know that the enemy is the father of lies. So when you are showing these attributes, that means you got an unclean spirit on you because now you're doing the will of your father, which is the damn mm. Lord. Now, that's, that's who your father is now. You're doing his will when you're uttering verses, when you're irritable, when you're showing all these telltale signs of not a righteous person. You don't have a righteous spirit on you right now. Again, the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. He gave us these emotions for a reason. But how you handle adverse situations is going to tell everything about your character. It's going to tell everything about your character, who, what you have dwelling in your temple. That's um, all that, for real, man. I, I can't <laughs> make it more plain. Go ahead. Up. Uh, and I want to just mention something because a lot of people don't know that there's something called reading body language. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. can read body language, but people can also sense the spirit. There are those of us who can sense uh, that something is not right. Mm -hmm. And when we sense that other per people may not be aware of that. And so we have to build up what's called discernment to be able to assess yourself, to know when I'm going off, let me catch myself. Right. Because we sin with our mouth when we're agitated. We sin when we speak against our parents. We sin with the mouth when we speak evil communication. Mm. We sin with our eyes when we desire uh, 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 someone else's husband, someone mm. else's wife. Right. We sin with our eyes. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's when we start thinking of demonic things and I'm going to do this to her. or She did this to me. or I can't believe you would think of me like that. Right. Mm -hmm. You thinking in that way, you're sinning. That's iniquity within the mind, those thoughts. Mm -hmm. You have to be aware who is casting those thoughts upon your mind. Mm -hmm. Whether it be your best friend that's right next to you, your mama who always give me the best advice, right? Mm -hmm. But yet, no, she's not married. Mm -hmm. So it has to be a give and take. It has to be a balance. It has to be an awareness because if not, you will be end up being used as a $2 harlot mm -hmm. for the enemy. And mm -hmm. it can happen as quickly as five seconds. All it take, it take less than that sometimes for him to use you and destroy your life, destroy mm -hmm. your marriage, destroy mm -hmm. your household. Mm -hmm. You got that right. Because again, once you say something, you can't, can't take, it back. take a bite. You can't take a bite, right? You can, you can, you can apologize, but that that stain that's gonna always that spirit, it, it's that spirit is transferred. Wow. Yes, Lord. And you ever you ever heard that saying like say somebody walk into a, a crowded room and they say the tension was you can you can cut the tension cut with, with a knife. knife. Those yep. are spirits. Those are spirits. spirits. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's your spidey sense. As like if I could put in that sense how uh Peter Parker from Spider-Man, he had that spidey sense, he could sense danger. Mm -hmm. That's sensing the spirit. You can cut the tension because the 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 um the activity changes, the behavior changes. People shut up when mm -hmm. you come into the room. I don't want them to know. I don't want right. But you can feel. But you can feel it in the air, right? In and the that, flesh, that's yeah. The Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. A lot of times we don't listen. We enter right into that room, or you went to a party or something like, damn, something don't feel right this, about this party. And next thing you know, fist of cups going on in there, maze man spray, bullets flying everywhere. And you damn near got killed. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I can use that as an example. That work the other day, I was I I was delivering this package. And something told me not to go to this house. And I went anyway. And a damn dog mm -hmm. damn near mauled me. I mean, this big Cujo looking dog. But a lot of times we don't listen to that spirit that's in us that warn us of certain things. We do it anyway. Right? And then at the end, like, damn, I should have followed my first mind. That Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is there for us. But a lot of times we ignore it. And we put ourselves in danger. Like we said, be vigilant. Vigilant is to watch for danger. When we're not vigilant, a lot of times we let our guards down. Guards down, and that's when you get overtaken. We let our guards God. down with certain people in certain instances. 
and we're not watchful and vigilant. So let's grab the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 12 through 16. Brother Sirach, you going to read for us? Uh, Romans chapter 6 and uh, hey brother Ben, grab 2 Peter what's that? Now, I'm read that one. That's a long one. Hey, brother. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Hey, grab okay. um, Romans 6, 12 through 16. And like I said, if anybody have any precepts or anything they want to add to the discussion, by all means, go ahead. I'm getting ready to close it out in a second here. We've got the gist of it. Spiritual warfare out here. Uh, I want to, I was going to do this video, but uh, it's going to take a little bit long. So, yeah. Um, it was talking about the incubus. We can talk about it though. The, uh, how, how to pronounce that? The incubus spirit, right? Yeah, we could play it if you if you still got it. Uh. Um, it's gonna take a second to put up, but um, yeah, give me a second. Go read, go ahead and read that, uh, brother, brother Sarab. Kind of, kind of. The Book of Romans, chapter six, starting at twelve. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye shall obey it in the lust thereof. Mm. Neither yield ye your members as instrument of unrighteousness unto sin, mm -hmm. but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members are instruments of righteousness unto God. Mm -hmm. For sin shall not have dominion over you, mm -hmm. for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, I, I do, I like to point out to, to those who are new in the truth, when it says for uh you're not under the law, we're speaking of when you're when you're doing righteousness, you're not under the law of sin. Fine. Under grace, because even though you're doing your best, you still have to uh you still have to in some cases you still have to be punished for the things that you have not, you know, normally done from the past or maybe not known. Um uh, continue uh you. verse no, what I, the part the point I wanted to make with that when it says sin shall not have dominion over you, right? Uh, so uh, when you when you're being possessed by a demonic by a demonic spirit, it has dominion over you. It has control over you. Power, power over you. If you, we, we're not supposed to yield our members, our bodies to unrighteousness, uncleanliness. You know what I'm saying? You 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 committing all these unclean acts because you're being controlled by an uh, evil entity. Go ahead, I'll continue. Okay, okay. Verse fifteen. What then shall we say? I mean, shall we sin because we are under the law? But uh, uh, slack you. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that? To whom ye yield yourself servant to obey, his servant ye are to whom ye obey. So, boom. Whether, so when you in sin, you are a servant. What's a servant? Somebody that's in um being uh commanded by demons. When you in sin, when we righteous, our spirit is being controlled by the Holy Spirit, which is the the, the Rewak, which is God, the most high God spirit. So in this book, I can't say it. Enough. It's mm. that you're in righteousness, that you're walking in wickedness. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. This that video and, I want to play real quick. Go ahead, you guys. And, and, but, but yeah, before you bring that to as well, like you said, either you're righteous or you're unrighteous. Either you're the light or you're the darkness. Mm -hmm. Now, when you start to exhibit both of those traits. That's what we mean by your lukewarm. Half the time you're sweet, the other time you're bitter. Half the time mm -hmm. you, I'm about to spit you out my mouth because you're so sour, so bitter, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that position that we take unknowingly sometimes, or we know that we bitter, or we know that we, you know what I'm saying? We bipolar, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever you want to call it, whatever label you want to put on it, the Most High God says, that's not going to fly in my kingdom. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make you choose. Or now I'm going to separate you, bring that separation. Christ said, I came not to bring up what I'm calling it, but a sword, a, mm -hmm. a father against mother, husband against wife. And so we want to be mindful of all of these things, um, you know, because like I said, demonic spirits are real. And either you can overcome it or you can uh, 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 fall victim to it. Calm. All right. Calm. Y'all can see my screen. Yeah. You can hear it. No. Nah, did you click that little button? When you uh, share the screen, oh, hold on. What button? What? 
Yeah, go back and uh, uh, unshare. And when you click the share button, it's a little checkbox down at the bottom left on the pop up. Okay. And it'll tell you share the music. Okay. Y'all can hear it. You got to share again. Okay. And it's going to be a pop-up in the bottom left hand. Did I say, say that right, Brother Sirach? Yeah, it should be, it should be a bottom, bottom, either the bottom left or the bottom right where it says uh, select audio. Mm. Okay, share. So we just seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all hear that? Why would the devil bring these agents yeah. to get you to relapse and to get you to stay off the journey? To get you to not us. We just hear the audio. We don't hear the audio. Exactly. There you go. It was over 300 days. Yeah. First time ever on Seymour Attention. And um, you got to understand your Seymour Attention journey, you guys. Yes, things will, good things will happen to you. Blessings will come your way. And God has a lot of blessings prepared for you if you endure the hardships, if you endure the trials and tribulations, when you endure the storms, when you pass all the tests, God will give you a blessing. But you all understand the devil doesn't want you to receive your blessing. The devil wants you to go back to the old you, um, back to the matrix, watching porn, masturbating, playing with yourself all day, fornicating, living that type of lifestyle. So what the devil will do when you're living a life of purity, when you're practicing celibacy, he'll send agents your way, female agents, marine kingdom, demons your way. Hey, you got this is all real, guys. This is a, this is how you know sleep retention is a godly practice. Because why would the devil bring these agents your way to get you to relapse and to, to get you to stay off the journey, to get you to not reap the blessings, the fruits of your labor? Okay, because I I can't speak for every other man, but I can speak for myself. When I was watching porn, masturbating, fornicating, uh, life just sucked, man. Life was terrible, uh, low vibrational. A CRM shouldn't weigh your budget down. Uh, it just sucked. It just sucked, man. Uh, letting people just use me, letting females just talk to me any type of way. Uh, with the Jezebel spirit, she has uh, she likes weak men. Jezebel, that's why I noticed when, you, when you're masking, when you're backing, you got the image that God created you to be. The Jezebels are not gonna like that, bro. But who cares about them? Forget about them. So my story time, and the Succubus spirit. You gotta understand the succubus spirit, the succubus, she's Satan's daughter, that's Satan's daughter, okay? Just like how God has his sons and his daughters, the devil has his sons and his daughters too. Not every daughter of God could be a succubus. Like only the, the only the Satan's children could be a succubus. Now, uh, a daughter of God uh, can, can have the Jezebel spirit on her, but she can't be a succubus. A succubus is the most demonic spirits. It could, it could be in somebody. It's heartless, soulless, um, it's just, this is a, this is dead. It's dead. Okay, so let's get on with the story. All right, first time on Sleep Merchant Journey. And on my Sleep Merchant Journey, I attracted many succubus. This is crazy too because before Sleep Merchant, I never attracted succubus. All of a sudden, I'm retaining. All of a sudden, I'm connecting to God. All of a sudden, I'm on that righteous path, that internal life. Here comes the succubus. That's how you know it's a demonic agenda. You know, the spirits are using people to lead you astray. To get you off your super journey so yeah and it's just to drain you to drain your energy because when you when you lose your energy it's like your it's that spiritual death all right you don't have your energy to get your goals back and forth you don't have your energy to to, to be motivated to be a man to be fruitful most by the earth you're just drained so best believe the suck of the satan that's who's sending them it's not you you don't just meet those suck of this for out of nowhere satan sends them your way okay and so I mean, this girl was just, <laughs> it's crazy because she came as like an angel of light, just like how the devil does. You know, she was, she claimed to be religious and all these things, right? And like, she just can't, what the, what the thing about the succubus, like she's very, she wants to get with you. Like she would always communicate, she always communicated with me, always hitting me up, always wanted to hang out with me. And I thought I was vulnerable at the time because at the time I wanted a wife. This is before I was married. I wanted a wife, so I was like, okay, um, I'll entertain the idea because I knew I was on, on my 10 month streak, guys. I didn't even think about porn no more. I didn't even think about masturbating. I didn't even think about fornicating. I was on monk mode. I wasn't smoking, drinking. I wasn't doing nothing, bro. I was living a life completely pure 
and I felt good, bro. I felt so good. Remember, what's the devil coming to do? To steal, kill, and destroy. So he uses his children to do that to your life, to destroy you, to destroy your walk with God, your, your walk with Christ, okay, your walk with God. And um, so he came to my life, and at first I wasn't really, like I wanted to take things slow. You know, it's funny because on semen retention, everything is reversed. You know how people's, before semen retention, people would tell me I want to take things slow. But on semen retention, you tell them, you tell them you want to take things slow. Before semen retention, women are asking you all these questions, wanting to see how tall are you, how much money you make, what job you work. But on semen retention, you're asking them these questions. <laughs> you're asking them. It's like everything is reversed, bro. It's like the corruption, is, you're no longer operating like that, like most men, because most men are living for the flesh. So they're reaping corruption, you know? And when you live for the spirit, it's like, she said, a woman should be honored to be talking to you, bro. That's why on Sydney Rejection, you notice, you, you know, they're staring at you. You know, I feel like over here in Jamaica, they treat me like a celebrity, bro. You know, everyone just staring and looking. Cause you, you see, it's Sydney Rejection, bro. Because it wasn't like this before SR, man. I don't, I don't, I don't remember at least, you know? So, um, I want to say within two weeks of the Succubus encounter, um, it was like, she was like three hours away from me. And she, like I said, she claimed to be like religious and like, like claimed to be like, God. Uh, she was a, a, the Mormon religion, which is a red flag. I mean, any religion to me is anyone, cause I'm not religious, you know? So just, I can't mix with someone who's a part of a religion. Like I'm not gonna, it's not, I, I won't hate them. I won't, you know, like that, but I just can't, we can't, no vibe. Okay, I'm spiritual. I'm a follower of Christ, okay? Um, I, I worship the most high God of Israel in spirit and truth, but all the religious stuff, I just can't do. Just can't. I so I'm gonna stop it there. Who was that, uh, Mark the Messenger? Yeah, that was Mark the Messenger. Okay. So, so I just uh, I just used that, that snippet. If y'all wanna watch that, uh, I'll put it in the description at the bottom. But it goes into spiritual warfare. It's going into when you're in this wall. Remember uh, Sirach 2 and 1. I think it's 2 and 1. But it says, if you come and serve the Lord, prepare that soul for temptation. Because, again, when I came to the, it seemed like all hell broke loose when I came into the wall, right? Because I was living a, a, a life of sin, smoking weed. I went, I, I had stopped selling, you know what I'm saying, street pharmacies, but I was still in sin. I hadn't coming to the truth, right? I hadn't come into the, the walk of the truth. So when you turn your life to Christ, the enemy is going to send everything, the kitchen sink at you, going to throw everything at you to knock you off your path. And then you go to thinking, damn, before I came into, maybe this, this, this truth ain't what it is because life was more peaceful when I was, when I was in the world, because you don't think that yourself, you don't think that you're that wicked, right? But you are wicked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was wicked. But I'm like, damn, maybe something ain't right about the truth because it seems like everything is coming at me since I've uh, since I turned my life around on the wall with Christ until I read the scriptures. Con, con, read it out, huh? bring it out, huh? but it, it, it seemed like that's the enemy. You were one of his soldiers, like the brother said. The enemy has his soldiers, his women soldiers, his men soldiers. You was on the front line for the devil. And he's not going to let you go that easy. It's a fight. It's a battle every day. That's why we got to walk in the spirit and we will not desire flesh. Now, I had sent it to you on text message like 30 minutes ago. I know you probably was going to bring that up. Okay. Okay. Kind, kind. Uh, you want to read it? I go. I got to pull it back up. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see if I got you sent in a text message. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. All right, all praises. No, I ain't get it up. I ain't get it. But yeah, uh, it's a spiritual warfare out here. So bring out, uh, so that's why the scripture said, give no place to the enemy. Be not angry. Be not easily offended. These The enemy is waiting on the opportunity to be to, so you can use him or he can use you. Don't be so easily offended. Don't be. Don't go from zero to 10 in two seconds. Because that split second can cost you a lifetime. That split second can cost you your life. Because when you're angry, you're not making logical decisions. You're not thinking. You're being emotional. And that can cause a lot of problems, a lot of issues. Right? So, I mean, uh, the brother brought up, uh, yeah, succubus. The definition is uh, 
and and it says an imaginary demon assuming female form of formerly held to have sexual intercourse with men in the sleep. And it works on both both sides. It'll come to you as, say, for instance, uh, a, a beautiful woman, right? Because we do know that the, the enemy is is dreadful dreadful to look at. Or right? a handsome man. Yeah. Or it come come as a handsome man. Or it can come as somebody mm -hmm. used to know. No, I said too. The other one too is it's, it's incubus and succubus. Kind of. Okay. They uh -huh. attack two different, um, you know, genders. Okay. Break it down. Huh? So, so the succub the incubus is a demon in male form mm -hmm. that seeks to have sexual intercourse with sleeping women, mm -hmm. and the succubus has that desire to sleep with men. So it's like two different. Mm -hmm. Spirits that attack the the male and the female the gender, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then Anubis, that's you no know, Egyptian. That's the one that um, contains the sleep paralysis. When you sleeping in that thing, you can't wake. It. That's the Anubis. Mm -hmm. And they're all demons. Mm. And they're all demons. Right? Yeah, all demons. So this spiritual warfare is real. the The world like to tell you that it's uh sleep paralysis. It's like a state of you being asleep, but you not woke yet. No, it's it's a demonic spirit that's attacking you. You're on the spiritual attack, and we gotta um and we gotta diagnose that and find what it takes to get rid of these things because it's gonna keep happening. It's it's gonna keep happening. When you think like like for instance, it happened to me like damn all my life, right? And every time, like the brother said, every time it happened, I was doing something I had no business doing, right? So. And the way that the antidote to that is stop committing sins. And a lot of times it comes to you, if you're a person with a high sexual, high sexual appetite, that's when it's going, it, it, it uses that to come at you, right? Because I'm a person, I don't really care about money. So it's not going to use anything. It's not going to tempt me. Uh -huh. I can't be tempted with money. So whatever your weakness is, that's how it's going to come for you. You get what I'm saying? That's how it's going to come for you. So we yep. got to be on our P's and Q's and vigilant and circumspect with all things. And even in your dreams, you got to know when something ain't right. I had the, the the notion in my dream to pray so that God would take whatever that thing was away. I had a notion in my dream. A woman came to me in my dream before, and I'm like, something don't look right. Pray, and you'll come up out of that thing. But a lot of times people don't pray. They just feed into it, they invite that thing in because they don't fight it. So if you're not going to invite it, I mean, if you're not going to fight it, that means you're accepting it, right? So you have to be able to fight these things off. And when you come out of that, you got to drop down to your knees and pray. Pray for protection. Pray to God forgive you for whatever you've done. Ask God to show you where you're coming up short at because it's going to keep happening. Just like uh, the story about when our people was in, in uh, was when, when, when Judah stole something and hid it in his tent and everybody was suffering because we didn't know where the sin was coming from. Mm. God All the pinpoint. Get attacked and we didn't know why. Same thing in your body, your temple. You're being <laughs> demonically attacked and I don't know why. See, you don't know where. See what midst mm. of sin that you're in. That's the why it's attacking you because you're in the midst of sin. We got to figure out what sin it is. Repent from that. Repent. Can, can, I, Repent. can I say something? All right. Go ahead. Huh? All right. Um, that spirit used to attack me when I was seven, six, seven, eight years, and I remember it because he used mm -hmm. to scare me. Yeah. And he used to cause sleep paralysis, bro. Mm -hmm. I couldn't move. I couldn't talk. I mm -hmm. could hear everything, but I couldn't move and I couldn't shake it off me. Mm -hmm. But when I was younger, it used to. I used to see an image with it, and the image was like a big dirt hill and it was moving and it had flowers on it, but the flowers was daisies. Mm -hmm. I didn't figure that out till, you know, I was older to, you know, when I learned what a daisy looked like, but I clearly remember that dirt hill and it used to move and used to have a bunch of daisies on it. Mm -hmm. And that was associated when people say, boy, you better stop. You're going to be pushing up daisies. Mm -hmm. I ain't never knew what that meant. I never knew what that meant, bro. Oh, wow, you just taught me something. I didn't know that meant that either. I thought everything's symbolic. Yeah, every everything is symbolic, 
And so even then with the other brethren that I've had, and we, like you said, we've all had these instances, these encounters spiritually, dream-wise, right? Mm -hmm. These are the spiritual attacks of the enemy. And if you are unaware, if you are not hip, if you are not conscious to what's going on, right? And mm -hmm. asking questions, right? If you're not asking questions, you will end up uh, being under attack and you won't be able to stand. You will be consumed. And well, what follows because, is... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, this is concerned with me. This is before the age of accountability, bro. Mm -hmm. Like I'm yeah. five, six, seven years old and I used to have these dreams frequently. Yeah. Not knowing I'm, you know, I'm not going out still and killing and, and, and sinning mm -hmm. like that, you know, because I'm still young, man, inside the household. But I still used to have these dreams of being attacked. And it always came with that image of a, a dirt hill that's moving oh. and had a bunch of daisies on it. And that's what I used to see every single time when that spirit came on me. And it used to scare me very badly, bro. And mm -hmm. I never knew what that meant or what it was. Until Boom. you know, I got older uh -huh. and learned what the meaning. When people say daisies, and wow. you're gonna be pushing up daisies, and it just show me this, bro, and it scared the heck out of me, man. Mm. But it wasn't dealing with my sins, you know, because I'm I'm a little jit. I wasn't out there doing, and I wasn't of an age accountability. But it was still showing me. You know, I don't think all the time is associated with you sinning. It, it's not. It's not per se you. Remember, you probably was in the midst of sin, like your household. Something that your households had has invited that entity in. Yeah, like, definitely you know, that. Somebody else in the house. Just like the, that's why I that. use the. That's why I use the example of that one. That one uh, family of Judah. Everybody, everybody else in the uh, in the camp was being was being killed and destroyed in wars. And because this one particular person over here was in sin, but it affected everybody. So it could be something in the house and it's going to affect everybody in that house. Somebody in sin, a hidden sin, and it's going to affect everybody in the household. So that's why we got to be careful. That's why we got to be careful even with our children. Hey, what y'all doing? Ain't no, ain't no prophecy up here. I'm going through phones and everything. Ain't no yeah. props up in here. You ain't listen to that rap music up in here. You ain't bringing no demonic books up in here. Anything mm -hmm. they bring in, it'll affect the whole household. So we got to be circumspect in those things. And, and like oh. you said, I would do the same thing as well. I remember seeing this big, I ain't seen no daisies on it, but I seen this like big, giant, like a shadow right before it attacked me when I was, I was like six, seven years old. And I know that, you know what I'm saying, things in my household, this was my mom, my, my household wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? So I wasn't in no sin, but whatever was going on in the household affects everybody. Affects everybody. Uh, and, I, and I want to make a, just a last point off that, that mm -hmm. point from my experience. A lot of times we don't do anything, but because of the content and the media that we consume as children mm -hmm. and that we're allowed to, um, that poisons our minds it pollutes our minds even the, at a young age watching scary movies that stuff used to get me the most where my imagination was just so wicked polluted and violent and mm -hmm. so you know watching chucky and all these you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. that portray horror but for entertainment so what we watch, what we allow our children to watch, what we hear, what we allow our children to hear, because growing up back in my days in the 80s and so forth and so on, right, you weren't allowed to do that. At least my dad didn't do that. He ain't, look, you turn any rap music on, turn that devil music off. Mm -hmm. If you, you know what I'm saying? If you had mm -hmm. something demonic or killing on it with the video games, you cut it off. And he would tell me to this day, I still remember my dad said, them games is the devil. <laughs> and I looked at him, I said, daddy, that ain't what it is. Yeah. But he was right. Yeah. He was right. It we put agree. and project that spirit into you where your eyes and what you experience and your reality gets a chance to see what it's like to do that or to kill or to shoot someone. Uh, Grand Theft Father, they call it nowadays. Virtual reality, they call it, right? And so that's another way the enemy has evolved sin and how we are participating in it. So we have to be even more vigilant nowadays because sin is evolving. 
Con, go ahead up. Con, con. All right, so grab uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 43. I'm going to get ready to close out. But uh, yeah, I'm glad Brother Ben brought that out because it might not be something that you're doing, but it's something that's going on in your vicinity, in your household. You know what I'm saying? We can't have no seat. We can't, especially in your household, we got to hold everybody accountable. Accountable. I don't care how old they are. Everybody got to be held accountable because everybody's going to be uh -huh. and, and, and look, and look what you say. They attack the most vulnerable, the children. You was a child and because you're the weakest. So, of course, it's going to attack you. What, what, what can we, like, as a child, it happened to me. And I had no power over that thing or nothing. It held me down. And I just asked God. I said, please, God, help me. And it poof, went away. I don't know what made that come in my head and say, please, God, help me. But when that thing attacked me, I prayed to God in my head and it just poof, disappeared. I tried to fight it off, but I couldn't. So, yeah, man, every, everybody got to be held accountable. All right, go ahead, huh? And you want to hear Sorry, something but... that levels uh, um fear that they instill in you, like with the scary movies, you know, I know uh, you probably used to watch when you was little. The scary movies that was out then was when we were small. Not yours, man. Yeah. Nah, it was um Dracula, Frankenstein, um, the Mummy. You dating us? Uh, you dating the werewolf. Us, huh? Yeah. Uh, the well, it is. Well, in the werewolf, you know, mm -hmm. and I used to sit back and contemplate, be like, you know, I'm scared for a moment, but shoot, I could kill Dracula with a. Uh, a knife, a silver stake, and yeah, the yeah. silver thing in his heart. I could kill the mummy. He ain't gonna catch me. I just shoot him. The werewolf. All he needs is a silver bullet. Frankenstein. I pull his arms off. So I'm like, I came overcame my fear like that with those monsters. Mm -hmm. But when they brought out the Exorcist, bro, yeah, there was nothing to combat that because that was something spiritual that jumped spiritual. in you, and that yeah. terrified me. To no end for years, bro. Knowing that it's spirits out there that could possess you like that, and you can't do anything, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're not aware of what's going on. And that scared me the most out of every scary mood that they put out there. So that's how they escalated the fear, you know, from being something physical to hey, you could fight this dragon yep. or whatever. Mm -hmm. to something spiritual is nothing you could do about that even when they showed it in the movie hey pulling out the bible and crosses and all of that like that didn't work mm -mm. yeah you know why that didn't work satan can't get rid of satan yeah. <laughs> them, 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 them the priests, they can't get rid of the devil because they the devil themselves but, I understand what but you're if saying, you though. don't know this like yeah. you'd be like man what can you do like did these people holy and blah 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 mm -hmm. not knowing the evil that they produce but this is something that I was looking at, like, man, what can you do against that right there, bro? And that's what scared me mm -hmm. more than anything else, man. And they the still that in you, bro. Yeah. Friday the 13th, they're going to come to you to sleep, and that's what happens. But now, knowing what we know now, we know that the, the, the Word of God, um, the 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 Word of God, Ephesians chapter 6, the, the, the armor of God protects us from all that. But we know the antidote from that is don't be in sin. And even and even if we all try, we do know that we have power to trade off the serpents. We have, we know that we have power now. Back then, we didn't have no power. You know what I'm saying? Now we have the power, the power of the word of God, and just keeping these law, statutes, and commands. Uh -huh. I, and I have one one more quick uh, before you before you close out. Second uh, Corinthians two and verse four. So like we're talking about being possessed. Uh, having awareness to know if you're possessed or not, uh, mm -hmm. putting on the whole armor. Now that you know that you're being attacked, you need to put your arm on. And now that you know that you put your arm on, you need to know that you have weapons, right? Pick up uh -huh. the weapons. This is Second Corinthians uh, four, and we want to use these weapons, right, to fight against the enemy. To and it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal; they're not fleshly. They're mm -hmm. not something that you could pick up here, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, bust somebody upside the head with, right? Mm -hmm. But mighty through the pulling down of strongholds, pulling down those demonic strongholds, those fortresses that have been around for so long. I've been doing this since I was a kid, right? You got to go against those things that the enemy has built up, those fortresses that are on the inside. Verse mm -hmm. five says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God mm -hmm. and bring into captivity mm -hmm. every thought to the obedience of Christ. Con. 
kind. All praise, all praise. You got to bring that, instead of that thing bringing you into subjection, you got to bring it into subjection, right? All right, so let's grab uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 12, 43 and 45. Brother Matt, you grab uh, Sirach 44, 30. And Brother Sirach, you, you'll close us out with uh, Matthew 26 and 7. John, you said Sirach 44, 30? Yeah, Sirach 44, 30. But uh, brother, uh, brother Ben, grab Matthew chapter 12, 43 through 45 first. Don't talk about the unclean spirit. What you want me to get out? You got it? Okay. Say Matthew, Matthew what? Matthew 12, 43 through 45. Uh brother, brother, uh, brother Matthew, he's gonna grab Sarah 44 30. And uh I said brother uh Sarah, he's gonna grab uh Matthew 26 and 7. All right, go ahead, brother Ben. And I'm the last three. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. All right, that's good. So basically the point I want, it says when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, right? And it came back and what happened? His house is swept out and garnished. It's clean. But what did, did not he have in it? He did not have the Holy Spirit in him. It was clean. It was empty. So he came right back in. So that's what, Go ahead. So that's what we always got to realize and understand. When we get rid of something, we got to have, we got to have, keep that Holy Spirit within us. Keep that peaceful spirit in us. Keep that vigilant spirit in us. Keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Keep all these spirits. Keep that spirit in us. Because if we have nothing in us, some, you, you're going to always be occupied. This temple is going to always be occupied by either light or darkness. And then it said when that spirit came back, it only came back by itself. It brought seven more even wicked spirits with it. So that's why that person was more uh, was worse off at the end. Because a lot of time when we go get over an obstacle or a hurdle, we think it's over with. Right. We think it's over with. Hey, our brother Zay, read this real quick. Luke 4, 13. We think it's over. We can kick back and, and chill. Oh, man, I made it over whatever obstacle I was getting through. I made it through it. So now we think it's time to relax. Grab that, brother uh, Zay, Luke 4, 13. The book of Luke, chapter 4, starting in verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. He departed for a season, which means he's coming back. You may have won that battle, but the, we still won into the end. Until the kingdom come, we still at war. And in this battle, and in this war, you might win some and you might lose some, but it's a continual battle until Christ come. He said, what? Endure until the end. But a lot of times we get over certain things and we drop our guards. And that's when the enemy double back round and you ain't got, you not on watch, you not vigilant. And he's going to bring seven more with him. So we always got to remember that. All right, brother, uh, brother uh, Matt, uh, Sarah 44, 30. You're mute. Hold on, uh, Salakia. Um, I didn't see. Hold on. Let me check it again. I didn't see um, a 30 in Sarah 44. Let me go to it real quick. Sharab, one minute. Sharab. Oh, no, Salaki. That was the wrong one. Sharab, 4330. Salaki. Yeah. Now, I was going to read the one where uh, Christ said uh, when, the, when the man had an unclean spirit on him, but he said, these come not but by fasting and prayer. 
So if we realize that we recognize that we have something unclean on us, something that is not of God on us, fast and pray and have elders to pray over you, have the congregation, have your brothers and sisters, have your wife to pray over you, and you stay in prayer as well. All right, go ahead, Al. John. Uh, Sirach, chapter 43, verse 30 says, when ye glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as ye can, for even yet will he far exceed and when ye exalt him, put forth all your strength and be not weary, for ye can never go far enough. Kind, kind. So the work that we're doing, the work that we do for the Most High God, by going, bringing forth the word to his people, by doing these videos, by doing music, by whatever thing, by the women sewing and cooking, uh, bring, uh, or the women having their classes. We can never go far enough. So that means we always got to keep our foot on the pedal. We always got to be going forward because, like I said, we can never do it. So we don't want to be docile. We don't want to be stagnated. We always want to be reading. We always want to be learning. We always want to gotta be doing something to bring forth the kingdom of God. Because I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to go. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like Amos, like I'm designing the day of the Lord, but I'm tired of this one. So I know the things that I have to do to make it to the next level, to make it to the next chapter, which is the kingdom. We got to keep pushing this word because a lot of our brothers and sisters out there that don't know. We got to get out there to the ones that don't have any, any inclination, any, any knowledge of who God is or who they are. So that's the word. That's what we got to push to our people. We going, we trying to go out to those that are not well. We're trying to go to the sick. We, we trying to bring the word to God's people who don't know who they are. At all times, in any conversation. That's why all our conversations got to be what? For edification. No vain babbling. All right, Brother Sirach, we're going to grab that alabaster box and we're going to close out. Matthew chapter 26, starting at verse 7. You're on mute. Matthew 26, starting at verse 7. Mm -hmm. There came unto him a woman having the alabaster box of very precious ointment. And poured it on his head, and he sat and meat. I mean, and he sat at meat. But when the disciples saw it, they had they had indignation, saying, "To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor." And when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, "Why trouble ye the woman?" For she has wrought, I mean, she, for she have wrought a good work unto me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in the, for in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, whosoever this this gospel shall be preached in the whole world. There shall also this that this woman has done be told for a memorial of her. All praise. And with that being said, all praise the most high God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for this Shabbat lesson. Hope everybody got something out of it. Uh, yeah. We can move forward. And uh, at the end of the day, keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. With that being said, shalom. 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 shalom.